we go back into the series day two and this morning we we were speaking about the gift of prophecy um the gift of prophecy via the holy spirit and um our presenter this morning will be talking to us doing an exhortation for about 10 15 minutes on this gift is our barrel nation lady evangelist carolyn mclean good morning auntie carolyn good morning dwight and good morning barrel nation how are you wonderful wonderful we are blessed and highly favored and i hope that you are ready and rearing for us right amen 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 that's it that's it ready and we're rearing and ready to go <laughs> ready to go uh, because you know um, these 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 presentations are important ladies and gentlemen because if i'd known some of these things when i was a younger christian maybe i would have been in a much better place a, a much more matured in God, but I really didn't know, you know what I mean? Those times the focus was different. There's not much teaching and all that sort of stuff, depending on the church that you would attend, really. Amen. You know what I mean? And um, you know, the whole function functionality and the operation of the Holy Spirit was limited, you know, to That's just true. once you get saved, you're baptized, and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and you speak in tongues, and them hear you speak in tongues already even one time, you're good to go. You're saved now, you're ready for God ever. But, you know, we are <laughs> learning that it is way more, way more than that. You know what I'm saying? Way more than you that. You know, that we way have power. That. We have so much power by, via the Holy Spirit that some of us could have saved some of our families' lives and even our lives uh, um, and, uh, you know, gotten rid of sicknesses and troubles around us and, and prevented some troubles that eventually reached us if we knew how to, or the workings of the do. Holy Spirit was. So we have Carolyn. Go ahead, Carolyn. You'll be talking about prophecy today. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. And I so agree with you, Dwight. I say good morning to everyone. I so agree with you because the scripture tells us that Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. And, you know, he gave his life for the church and the church is washed by the word of God. So we need the word. And the Bible also tells us that people perish because of lack of knowledge, as you said before. That's right. So this morning, I will, you know, go into explaining as best as I can through the Holy Spirit, the gift of prophecy. Um, that's what I was asked to do. And yeah. I will, I hope I will do a good job of the same. Okay. Amen. So first, I want to give honor to God, who is the head of my life. And at this time, I will ask that the Holy Spirit will speak through me, that I will just be a vessel and a conduit to speak, thus saith the Lord. Um, I'm just reminding everyone, I'm not sure if we have gone through this scripture again in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 11. Um, I'm just reminding everyone that's the scripture that we're looking at today. And it says in verse 7, but the mani manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, to another faith, and by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit divide into every man severally as he will. Amen. The word of the Lord is blessed. This morning, I will be looking specifically at the spiritual gift of prophecy. And this gift is an extraordinary and unique gift. In Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he urged them to pursue love and to earnestly desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. We see that in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 1. The Greek word for the gift of prophecy is prophet, prophetia, which is the ability to receive a divinely inspired message and to deliver it either to others in the church 
or to some specific individual. The Holy Spirit is the person that will give that message to a messenger and will give that message as a clear, direct, prophetic word. These messages can take the form of exhortation, correction, disclosure of secret sins, prediction of, of future events, comfort, inspiration, or other revelations given to equip and to edify the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 14 verses 3 and 4 says, on the other hand, the one who prophesies seeks to speaks to people for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. The one who speaks in tongues builds himself up, but the one who prophesies builds up the church. The gift of prophecy can also be used to convict an unbeliever. 1 Corinthians 14, 25 24 and 25 tells us, but if all prophesy and unbeliever or an outsider enters, he is convicted by all. He is called to account by all. The secrets of his heart are disclosed. And so falling on his face, he will worship God and declare that God is really among you. We should also note that all prophecy needs to be properly tested. As the Bible tells us that there will always be false prophets amongst us, along with the possibility of well-meaning believers prophesying out of their own imaginations. The passage of scripture that gives us a direct warning is 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 19 to 21. And it says, do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Those with a gift are especially sensitive to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and the needs of the body of Christ. They should be humble and continually study the scriptures in order to test these revelations before revealing them. When the prophetic word is spoken, the messenger should allow or even expect others to weigh what is being said against the scriptures and interpret the message accordingly. All prophecy should line up with scripture. If it does not, it should immediately be rejected. God will never go against his own word. And the Bible also outlines protocol in the operation of the gift of prophecy. In 1 Corinthians 14, 30 to 32, Paul says to the church in Corinth, and if a revelation comes to someone who is seated, the first speaker should hold his peace, for you can all prophesy in turn so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. The spirits of prophets, are subject to prophets. The Bible tells us that in the last days, the Holy Spirit will be poured out upon all flesh. It tells us that our sons and daughters will prophesy. We see this word in Acts chapter 2, verse 17, and Joel chapter 2, verse 28. If you so desire... This very powerful gift of prophecy, although some persons are born with this very powerful gift, you can ask. Matthew, 20, Matthew 7 and verse 7 says, ask, 
and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. I suggest that you begin with your Bible. Read and meditate on the word of God until it becomes a part of you. Pray and communicate your desire through the Holy Spirit. Number three, consume sound teaching and testimonies. This will fuel your desire and increase your knowledge. And four, last but not least, meet a need. Spiritual gifts, including the gift of prophecy, are not designed as fireworks for oohs and ahs. They are mainly given as a means to extend love and the grace of God to others. Taking steps to love others puts you and them squarely in the path of God's grace. Amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. And if I have more time, Brother Dwight, I just wanted to, that was my presentation, but I had an example of the gift of prophecy. Yes, go ahead. Working mm -hmm. out in, in real life. And, and this was in Jamaica. Okay, thank you. Um, this was in Jamaica. My mother told me of this story of when she was a, a young girl this lady at that time you used to have mothers we still have mothers in the church but they operated a little bit differently you know back in the old days and this lady came she she stopped at the house and she spoke to my grandmother and said she had a, a word she got a message to deliver to a lady and this was the place like in the vision that she got this was the place that she was to go, but and she described that lady to my grandmother. And my grandmother said, oh, yes, that's that's our neighbor. And, you know, she went, she said she had a message. She didn't tell my grandmother what the message was. She just said she had a message. She described the lady. And she went. She had her drum and she was knocking. She had her head wrapped, you know, those mothers back in Jamaica. And she went. And at that time, our neighbor, I was told by my mother that she was going crazy. She would, we had a pond in our district and many times she would be trying to drown herself in the pond. She would run and, um, you know, just run into the pond, just acting crazy. People would have to use a rope to like drag her out. And the lady came and she said, I have a word for you from the Lord. The Lord sent me to you. And the Lord says to tell you that the reason why you're going crazy is that you have called up spirits and you have, there are things buried in your yard that you need to get rid of. And um, my grandmother told my mom that it started to rain, and my mom was there too. It started to rain, my mom said, and you know, people gathered, you know, it's country, and people would come out, and people gathered, and you know, everyone was like on the veranda here, and the lady was talking, you know, saying what the, what God said to say to our neighbor. And they started to rain, and everybody was, you know, sheltered. And the lady just ran out, our neighbor, just ran out into the yard, and she started to use her hands and to dig in the dirt and there were bones she had skulls like human bones buried in her yard and the woman you know that mother told her the spirit of the lord says to tell you you have to get rid of all of this she was just using her hands and she was just digging like crazy and i remember my my mother said my grandmother had to keep her kids they had to get a, a fisherman to take them to sea because that's the instruction that the, the the that woman from god told her was that she was to get rid of everything she had buried and to dump them into the sea and from then she was healed she was, so that's an example of how you know someone can get a prophetic word a prophetic word has to be delivered directly it is a direct prophetic word through the holy spirit and it's usually direct and you go you deliver the word and then you leave yes that's and, how the gift operates and it is different from a word of knowledge because the purpose and the intent is different yeah, thank you. That is true. Thank you. Thank that you so true. much, Auntie Carolyn. Wonderful and concise presentation. Very clean. Um, and it showed that you took some time to, to do at least a little research in the gift of prophecy. Um, and 
I, I am also glad that you didn't mix it up or go into the office of a prophet because that's a different no. that's that's a different category of, of, of operation happening there. This is what is available to every single child of God that possess the Holy Spirit of God inside of them. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, it is. Amen. God bless you and God bless you by our nation. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, that was Auntie Carolyn speaking on the gift of prophecy. So, all of us, ladies and gentlemen, can prophesy. But all of these operations are by the Holy Spirit. He decides when and where and how it happens. 